Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna do a book review. Uh, today's book is going to be Mathematics for Economist. It's by Carl P. Simon and Lawrence Bloom. So this book I used in my master's for applied economics. Um, a lot of you are gonna be asking like, how does this apply to data science? You know, if it's economics, it's great for data science for many reasons. It's also great for financial engineering for many reasons. So let's dive on in and talk about the book. So one of the best parts about this book is the way that it's structured and laid out. And I can't say this for enough books because typically the structure on books is kind of convoluted and a lot of times they just mix things up. And so it's kind of hard to use the book as a reference guide and to figure out where your knowledge is missing. Um, this book starts off in part one, they call it an introduction, but it really focuses on one variable calculus so it starts you from the very beginning. It covers you know, linear equations. It covers differentiability and continuity within functions. Um, this book in general really dives into the conceptual soundness parts like number theory and timelines and what is a real number. Um, how do these all fit together? And so it just covers the basics. It does, you know, doing a derivative, doing the chain rule, uh, doing exponents and logarithms. And I know many of you are thinking like, oh, I'm so tired and bored of this review already because I've already done all that. But that's just kind of the introduction to kind of patch the foundation. And I think it's necessary if you need to go back and kind of look at the uh, assumptions behind a lot of the ways we do the derivatives and how these actually impact further more complicated problems. The second part of the book, again, dives into linear algebra. Um, some of these kind of topics that they will cover is introduction to linear algebra, systems of linear equations. It really gets into matrices algebra. And I think this is crucial for data science. If you wanna be a data scientist, you have to know how to do uh, matrix multiplication and matrix algebra. So I think this book is a great foundation if you're new to data science. Even if you have like a statistics background and you're looking to move more to data science, uh, linear algebra and using matrix algebra is very important to be able to figure out how the algorithms work, especially in like neural networks gradient boosting, these type of algorithms will help you better understand this. And then the third part of the book dives into multivariate calculus. So they call it calculus of several variables. Uh, it does limits and open sets. It dives into functions of several variables. Uh, it goes in through the basics of you know calculus. And then it really dives into the implicit functions and their derivatives. Um, a lot of this book has applications specifically towards industry and economics. And I'm gonna dive into a few of these examples here in a second. But then the fourth part of this book goes into optimization. Uh, optimization I don't think is covered at least to the extent this book covers it in many classes at a master or PhD level. Um, a lot of students will use this in a master's course. I've also seen this used in PhD courses as well. So I think it's a good book to have at a more advanced level, but it also covers the basics as we talked about. For the optimization round, it covers a lot like the quadratic forms. It dives into unconstrained optimization, constrained optimization with first order conditions. It starts doing constrained optimization part two, and then it dives into uh, homogeneous and homothetic functions. Again, if you don't know these words, this book would be great to pick up because it would kind of educate you on how these function and how they tie to Real world problems. And then it kind of dives into more of the economic side as well, doing concave and quasi concave functions. Um, again, it's just knowing how to use the math, knowing the theoretical construct, and how to apply that in a real world situation. In this book even covers ordinary differential equations, so ODEs, which you need to know for financial engineering applications because you have to learn ODEs first, so then you can move on to partial differential equations, the PDEs, which again are used in stochastic calculus. And it covers a lot of different like ODEs and then ODE systems of equations. It does subspace attached to matrices, applications of linear independence. And then part six of the book dives into advanced linear algebra. So now it's taking all the basics you've known, it's taking all the calculus, it's taking the optimization, and now we're kind of taking it to that next level. And it really dives into different topics such as the applications of linear independence. Uh, it does portfolio analysis. So it starts off in part, or in part two point six, I believe. Uh, it's an example way back in the book. You do a little bit, you get a little bit of hands-on work in the linear algebra space, um, and now it's going through the optimization you've learned, and then it does this portfolio analysis kind of short example, but it helps you apply this to a real world. This would be good if you're in finance, optimization, even data science realm. Uh, learning to optimize based on different problems is crucial in the industry, and I think this book does a really good job at covering that. And then part seven is like the main last kind of chapter of this book or section of this book. 
uh, and this covers advanced analytics. And the advanced analytics just covers uh, limits and compact sets as well as calculus of several variables part two. So it takes it even further if you need a little more advanced uh, groundwork in the calculus part. And then the final, final section is section eight and that's the appendix. This book does a really good job, I think, at like covering all the material and not boring you with too many details um, for like derivations. And you can actually go back into the appendix here and it has the proofs and the der derivations of a lot of it. But that being said, it does do a lot of mathematics. A lot of the notation is in a mathematical notation. So if you don't have a strong math background, this book might be a little difficult to swallow um, starting out. But I think in general, this book does a really, really good job at covering a lot of the fundamentals that you would need for data science, uh, fundamentals you would need for financial engineering, as well as fundamentals for economics, econometrics. And it's an all around good book from my perspective, doing analytics in the business setting. So overall, this book is stellar. Um, I was originally gonna say it's a four star book out of five, but to be honest with you, it's a five star out of five. Um, I haven't used the book in a long time. I did it in grad school. And yet, now as I'm moving back into data science and doing some of the mathematics, I've just forgotten, it's been years. And so now I'm actually diving back into this book here. So somebody who's working in risk management and has like a stats, economics, financial engineering, kind of a mixed background. I've heard of gradient descent, but going into neural networks is a new area for me. And I had to go back and review, you know, how do you do gradient descent? How do you do the calculus to do it? And again, this book was stellar. I just dove back into this. I was like, I'm pretty sure I've done gradient descent. It sounds really familiar. And I opened this book up and it had everything I needed. It has optimization here as well which I think is really, really good for a lot of banking problems. So overall, I'd give this book a five star out of five stars. It's really, really amazing. If you look at it online, it also has like four out of five stars. Um, I think the book is underrated. I think it is a little more complicated and complex than what you would do in an undergraduate setting. Um, you might use this for your undergrad, but you really need to cover the entire book to get the depth you need for a graduate program. But overall, this book is really good, guys. I'd really encourage you to get it. Uh, it's one of the best out there. I have the hard copy. I think this book is actually written in like 1994, so it's an old version of the book that I have. Uh, there's a newer version that came out in 2010. Same author, same titles. I have not seen the book, but I assume it's the same book or it's the same book with some updates and kind of more modern approaches. Uh, I know somebody said that the book seemed outdated when they read it. Yes, it's very old. I mean, I guess not very old, but 94, it's quite old for a lot of the textbooks that are used today. But I think this book in itself is a great value. And if you're gonna have a one book on your shelf for like optimization problems and mathematics, especially towards the finance side, um, it's more like pure math and not necessarily like a industry specific book. I think this is the book I would get. Anyways, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this book if you have it. Uh, let me know in the comments below also so if you'd like me to review other books, I know I've been getting a ton of reviews for John C. Hull's uh, derivative pricing book. Yes, I will cover it eventually, uh, but it's a large book. I would like to go back through the book as I haven't been through it in a long time to give you guys a more well-rounded approach to the book. What are the pros, what are the cons? Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.